iPhone. Mas foi ele que sonhou. Fica aqui. Ja, oh, je dingen gegoogeld. Ja, ja, ik was eerst verwijderd. Ik heb. Uh, 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 ik moet kijken of het livestream. Ik weet niet waar mijn phone is, is niet kaar, man. Maar wat ik neem. Het is kijken. Het kijken of het livestream. Ja, hij is live. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Ah, uh, this is good to go. Good to go. Maximum speed. Down into darkness. Oh. 
Amen. Please go ahead and see. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It's so great to be together this morning to worship as God's family, to lift our voices and sing together. Uh, you know, with all the uh, all the talent competitions and shows around, you know, on television and around the world, I am convinced that God created us to be singers and to worship. Right? I mean, here, it's incredible. Yeah. I am overwhelmed <laughs> with the talent. Yeah. Around the world. Amen. That's in human beings. <coughs> and I think it reflects our creator. It does. I do. That we are made to worship. We are made to lift our voices in harmonies. And you know, the angels, they say, are going to be even more incredible. Sing with the angels one day. I want to read from Luke chapter 4, a great passage. This passage always encourages me so much. Uh, verse 14 of Luke chapter 4, it says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and rolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Mm. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Recovery of sight for the blind. To release the oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing awesome. scripture. It, then it says, then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. It says, the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. They were riveted on Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And then he said, and he began, and he began by, uh, by saying to them, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Mm -hmm. Guys, what an amazing scripture. We have such an amazing Jesus, we such do. an amazing Lord, amazing master. Guys, it's so incredible that we get to be his followers and get to be Live a life submitted to his plan for us and his, his purpose for coming into the world, to rescue us. I love these, uh, this, this, this passage from Isaiah. He, uh, good news to the poor. Guys, we, it's not just today that this is fulfilled. It's, it's today for us. It's fulfilled every day. Right. Yeah. Every day we get to live enjoying the great news of what God has done for us, what Jesus has done for us. Mm -hmm. Each day, good news is poured out mm -hmm. because Amen. we are broken and we are flawed and we blunder and we stumble That's right. in our weakness and in our humanity and God gives us good news he does. through Jesus. And that is that he loves us. He lifts us up. It says, uh, he, sent a, he, sent, uh, he sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Yep. Guys, freedom in Jesus. As we understand the depth of God's grace, we just live more and more in freedom. Mm -hmm. The freedom because of the truth of God's promises, the truth of his love, even the truth about me and, and the truth that you learn about you, and that is that in spite and, you know, in your brokenness, you can be so messed up. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. God loves you and his grace covers you mm -hmm. as you live out, live in faith. Mm -hmm. And as you live in faith in the cross and the faith in Jesus and faith of his amazing love, we are released. Re recovery of sight for the blind. Mm -hmm. We do really live in a world, and not I don't believe this is just physical blindness, it's spiritual blindness. Sure. You know, the Word of God, as we live our lives as disciples, as we live our lives out trying to follow Jesus and being Jesus followers, there's so many aha moments yeah. where we, have, we, we see things about ourselves and our character. Yeah. We learn stuff, stuff that's been hurting us and holding us back, robbing us of joy, robbing us of peace, rob, robbing us of the deep freedom that, that Jesus wants us to have. Mm -hmm. And we have those moments, and they're amazing times. When we tackle, and we see that stuff, and we take it to God, we share it with one another, and we get, we have victory. Yeah. We grow, yeah. right? We grow spiritually. And we know what it is to see 
and to have our sight restored. It's amazing. It is. To have more clarity, more and more each day and each week and each year that we live. To release the oppressed. You know, we're just, we just get oppressed. Probably every day we face oppression in all kinds of different ways. Uh, it could be job related. It could be stuff at home. It could be spousal, right? It could be, there's so many different ways. Our world is oppressing us. The news is oppressive. Sure. I don't know if you guys realize it. It's pretty negative. Yeah. <laughs> to turn on the radio and listen to news or the television and listen to news. Mm -hmm. It is oppressive. And you know what? Jesus releases us from it. He gives clarity to our perspective about what's going on in the world. So that no matter how bad it looks, and no matter how, how bad it sounds, you and I can live in joy and hope Amen. and peace, knowing that God is in control. He's the guy that works everything out for good. Like, really? Everything? Yes, everything. Everything God is working out for good. And so we learn to lean it, leave it with him. <laughs> leave all the problems to him. The threats of war are going on right now. My goodness. The anxiety that people, that is so oppressive, and it guides us so many different arcs of life. And he came to release us, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, it's so amazing to be together. It's so incredible to walk with you each day in prayer and, Father, in your word, in fellowship with one another. Father, thank you so much for these, this great scripture that Jesus fulfilled. And now we live every day, Father, living in your favor. We live every day growing in hope, growing in love, growing, Father, and as, as, we, as we understand the cross more deeply and it be, empowers us more and more significantly each day as we hold on to your amazing promises that, that Father caused us to be able to live in love and joy and in hope. Amen. Father, we're so grateful. I pray that you bless this time of fellowship as we meet together as a family, as your family. I pray, God, that we will be, in strength, that we will be strengthened. I pray that, Father, you will lift us up. And that we'll be encouraged as we, we sing together these amazing words of these hymns. As we pray to you, as Sean's going to bring the message, as we're going to remember Jesus' blood shed for us. Mm -hmm. I pray, God, that you will stir us and lift us. And, Father, give us, Father, help us to go away from this time together lifted up, mm -hmm. renewed. Yes. And, Father, resolved mm -hmm. that this is what we need today and every day is to live in your power the power of the cross, the power of faith, the power of hope, mm -hmm. and the power of your love mm -hmm. through Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please go ahead and stand. We're going to sing uh, the song, Good, Good Father. You know, today's theme is never-ending stories. Jesus read that passage, which was written hundreds of years before he appeared on the scene. Yeah. But it is a storyline that God had written. And we are all stories. Right. and storylines of God. Mm -hmm. And we have a great, we have a good, good Father who wants a relationship with us. Amen? Let's yeah. sing that. Well, I've found the stories of one day
a brief fellowship break and the children can go to their class. So you're doing well, I, I have some issues where I'm going to be coming on. So now I'm getting this thing that we're going to talk about in general. And in the sense that we're going to be doing well for a I'm having trouble with constipation. I have issues with the same thing. I'm going to have to start with the same thing. I'm going to have to start with the same thing. I'm going to have to start with the same thing. So, so, I mean, it's just part of your you know, I, I mean, I, I have to thank for everything, you know, I, I perceive so much, like, I'm not going to complain about it, but I can see the challenge of it, and of course I see it where I work, where I see people who have lived, if they were you and me, they'd say, Lamentations in, re in reference to the cross, but this particular book's res book resonates with me because it is about pain. Yes, it is. Uh, this book was written by Jeremiah in response to the destruction of uh, Jerusalem and the temple around 586 BC. And you know, there's just no way we can really connect completely with that kind of pain, but we can in some ways. So, in the book of Lamentations, if you go to chapter 3, this is a familiar scripture. We use this to encourage one another, which is great. But I also want to talk about it in reference to the cross. In Lamentations chapter 3, starting in verse 19, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. You know, one of the toughest things for me as a Christian is the constant daily grind of being a failing. A failing to live up to the standard of Jesus. Now, some of you may not sin every day. I feel confident I do. <laughs> and that's that's hard dealing with We're that. All yeah, I wish you. But there's a point there we, where where Jeremiah writes he remembers the things he has done, the things his people have done. His heart is downcast. And, you know that's all about shame. You know, and can anyone relate to shame? Sure. Feeling shameful, yeah. Yeah, right. dealing with that kind of stuff. But then he says this. He says he calls to mind three things. He calls to mind God's great love, yeah. his compassions and his faithfulness. Yes. You know, when Jeremiah says, the Lord is my portion, therefore I'll wait for him, 
It's referring to three things. It's referring to inheritance. It's re referring to a, the source of um, security. Yep. And it's lastly, of course, referring to hope. And that's all about the cross. Sure because, you know, we come, as Tim so eloquently put, we come broken. We come, we bring nothing to the table. Right. It's all about God's great love for us. Mm -hmm. And so as you think about your week, you know, with the, it's the prayer of Exeter. Reflect on your disappointments. Reflect on things that you've done. But then come to the throne of God with grace, the gracious that he wants you to have, the yeah. freedom and the confidence. Because that's what it's all about, guys. It's all about this undeserved love that we so richly enjoy every second of every day for the rest of our lives. Let's pray. Father, well, I want to thank you for the privilege of being able to remember the blood and the body of Jesus. So grateful for, despite myself, Father, I, I come before you, Father, honestly and truthfully and with humility and so grateful, Father, for the opportunity, Father, to be washed all day, every day, Father, in the blood of Christ, and to receive undeserved grace, to receive the great relationship, to, to, to receive someone in my life, Father, who will never abandon me. And that's all because of the cross, Father. That's a demonstration of your love for us. And I just thank you for that. I, th I thank you on behalf of the people all over the world who uh, today, Father, will remember Jesus this way. In his name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dave. I don't know about you, some of us are guilty souls and we need messages and, and reminders that uh, grace is abundant. Yes. Um, what we have seen already in our journey, even just through the first few books of the Bible, yeah. is that God wants to partner with us. He wants to journey with us. And he's not looking for perfect people. Amen. In fact, in many ways, he gets greater glory yeah. from the imperfections being shaped and changed and being used to, to tell a story. Yeah. And so today is all about... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wrong, wrong, wrong way. Oh, there we go. <laughs> now I know I, I put this up there and, I, and you're probably going back to your childhood on this and I thought <laughs> do I do this or not Falcor and you know and all that kind of stuff but uh, Great story. Um, that's not what we're going to talk about <laughs> so pay no attention to the uh, <laughs> but as we've been journeying I just love the fact that God has such vision for humankind yeah, yeah. Mm. that we're flawed we fail, 
In our failings, he still chooses to work with us. Individually, through families, as we're going to begin to see through a nation of Israel. And he, he will even say later on, I didn't choose you because you were all that. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, you were the least yeah. of any of the nations of the yeah. world at that time. Yeah. Yeah. But I choose to work through you. Maybe that's how we feel. Or maybe we do feel we're all that. But God has a way of kind of bringing us together. All of that, down. All of us who don't think that we're anything, he yeah. brings us to a part yeah. and a place yeah. in Jesus. Amen. We're all a story. And the sending of Jesus, as we're reminded even in communion, is, is a storyline that God had dreamed and planned all along for our redemption, for our salvation. You know, the stories of the Gospels are the stories of Jesus. And they're told differently. And they're told from a different perspective. And they're, they're told to different kinds of people. Why? Because he wanted all people to understand who this Jesus was and how and why he came to help us be a never-ending story in the life of of his son the storylines of the gospels each raise a question and a charge and an encouragement and again that we are a part of a never-ending story so i'm going to do something a little bit different today okay. this is probably a very bold task okay. probably too much that i i chewed on but uh we're going to go through each of the endings of the gospel and then we're going to look at the book of revelation Okay. Wow. And we're going to talk about, not the whole book, just the ending of, the ending of Revelation. Yeah. Okay. And the whole purpose is to see that we are never-ending stories yeah. to God. Right. So let's go ahead and pray before we continue. God, we are humbled. We are amazed. We stand in awe of your love, your grace, your compassion, your vision. Yes, we are flawed. Yes, we fail. And God, you still choose to use us and work through us to be stories of your incredible love and vision for humankind. God, inspire us today. Help us to see how the endings of these Gospels, we, we are meant to kind of pick up the story and we are meant to be engaged. Mm -hmm. We are meant to continue and be never-ending stories. Thank you. Bless this time. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Going the wrong way. First one, to be continued. Mark chapter 16. You go, well, that's not the first gospel. Well, it is actually the first gospel written. And it was written, obviously, by Mark, who spent a lot of time with Peter. And so he would listen to his sermons. He would listen to him teach. He would be around him, and I'm confident he would ask many questions right. of what it was like to, to be with Jesus. Yeah. Mark didn't get a first-hand account, but Peter did. And so he wrote his gospel, kind of hearing all of the things that Peter shared about Jesus. Mm. But if you notice, There's a little footnote in your in the end of the Gospel of Mark mm -hmm. that says something that the verses 9 through the end of the chapter was not there in the original documents. Mm -hmm. oh, that's right. mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> they were filled in later. I think there's still a message. I think there is a reason why it got filled in. Yeah. I don't think any of us like abrupt endings no. so listen to this I want you to listen and I want you to hear this ending you are the first century church okay. hearing this letter the ending of this, this gospel written to you okay. and I want you to imagine how this ends when the Sabbath was over Mary Magdalene Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought aromatic spices 
so that they might go and anoint him, meaning Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, at sunrise, they went to the tomb. They had been asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. Then as they went into the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who is crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, here is the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples, even Peter. I love that. What had Peter just done? <clears throat> even Peter, that he was going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. Then they went out and ran from the tomb, for terror and bewilderment seized them. And they had nothing, and they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Done. How bad they Where's the good news? Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're leaving terrified, <laughs> bewildered, yeah. they're seized. Where's the good news in that? Yeah. People stunned, I mean, silenced. It leaves you hanging. None of us like, how many like movies that just kind of leave you? Oh, man. None of us like that. We like it tied up in a nice little bow. Yeah. Right. And quite, quite honestly, that's what happened with the gospel. Later on, a few decades later, they decided that this needed a little neater ending. Yeah. But uh, I want you to think for a second. We may think it needs a, a greater ending. And they back then may have thought it needed a different ending. But what did you know hearing this read a few decades after Jesus was raised from the dead? What do you know? That Jesus was raised yeah. from the dead. So this doesn't really shock you. No. Yeah. Because your relationship with God is real because of the resurrection of Jesus and someone shared the gospel with you. Yeah. So it doesn't leave them. They might go, okay, but I'm here today yeah. because the God, Jesus was raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's intriguing. But they, they realized and knew that the, the women didn't chicken out. No way. They didn't. They didn't keep it to themselves. Jesus did appear to Peter. I was going to say something, but I can't. So. No, 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 no. But yeah, it already is. It already is. But here's the thing. They were the real ending to Mark. Oh, come on. Made alive by the resurrection. But guess what? We mm -hmm. also are the real ending to Mark. Experiencing community based on resurrection. Peter needed to, to see Jesus. We'll talk about him in a little bit. The women were first to receive the announcement. Now back then, according to kind of legal legalities, women could not be a true witness to anything. They were it was invalid. Talk about how God works. He uses those that would be invalid witnesses to be the very fuel of the church. Yeah. How inspiring is that? Yeah. Delivered by women may have seemed inconvenient and troublesome to some, but it really changed the world. Yeah. And Mark has created, created kind of a dilemma that wants us to kind of hang on it and understand the power that it is, what it means to be continued. Mm -hmm. That we are the continuation. Mm -hmm. You know, in the middle of the gospel, Jesus asks a very important question. 
Who do you say that I am? Okay, you're John the Baptist, etc. But what about you? Who do you say that I am? Of course, Peter's confession, you're the Christ. That question is the same for us today. Who do you say that Jesus is? You now are the story that needs to be continued. If Jesus, this is not just, I, I, I am a member of a church. No, you are a disciple that said that you will carry your cross and die for him and be raised with him. It is much more than church membership. Yeah. It is a call to make Jesus Lord. Well, I did that at my baptism. Well, no, you do that every single day. Yes, that is how the story will be continued Absolutely. in our lives yeah. as we take up our cross. So Mark leaves us to wrestle the implications of the good news. He opens the gospel. This is the beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ. And he closes us with the fact that we are invited to experience the resurrection ourselves and share it with everyone. Now let's talk about Matthew. Okay. Okay. Matthew 28. So the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. I don't know who those were, but they were noticed. Then Jesus came up and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the very end of the age. We have our doubts, don't we? Even understanding resurrection, we still wonder. We still wonder whether God can use us. I don't know what their doubts were. How do we respond to Jesus now? We ran away from him. How will Jesus respond to us? Will he accept us? Will he rebuke us? Will he want anything to do with us? Since we left him in, in his greatest time of need. And some flat out denied they even knew him at all. With curses called down upon himself. How much guilt, regret, we've talked about that already today. Do we, did they feel? How, how much regret, regret do we feel? So Jesus comes and he speaks to them, I believe, with reassurance, forgiveness, and acceptance. And he focuses them on a vision, which I think is extremely important. That, and this, this vision that he gives him does not come without power and authority. Now I want you to listen to this. Imagine back to Jesus' temptation. What did Satan say to Jesus? All of this can be yours if you just worship me. Here's his quote. I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me so I can give it to anyone I want to. What changed? The resurrection changed that authority. Mm -hmm. Jesus broke the power of Satan's hold. Jesus going to the cross. Jesus being raised. Provided much more than Satan could offer. Now it is all authority has been given to me. He was given dominion and glory 
and kingship and all the peoples and nations and languages should serve him. This goes even back to, the, to Daniel. Pilate, the Sanhedrin, thought they had authority. They crucified him. They thought it was over and done. Jesus is raised. He has the ultimate authority. And so the vision that Jesus cast is not confined to just Israel or to Galilee or to Judea. It's to all nations. And we are now engaged in that, that commission, that charge. So Jesus is not simply a teacher or a rabbi or even just a Messiah. He is God's son. Amen. God's son. Part of the Trinity. And so he asks again, even in, in the middle of Matthew, who do you say that I am? I think there's a point there that, that, that the gospel writers want to make. Mm -hmm. Who do you say that I am? But God is with us. He doesn't just give us a charge and say, go do it. The beginning of Matthew talks about the birth of Jesus as who? Emmanuel. God with us. The end of his gospel. How, do, how, does, how does Matthew describe Jesus? Lo, I am with you always mm. to the very end of the age. We are commissioned by the resurrected Jesus. But it doesn't end there. As you continue to read into the, the gospel of Acts, we are given the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Yep. So it's not just God and tabernacle and Jesus and now we have the indwelling of the Spirit to, to work powerfully, experience resurrection power in our lives Amen. to fulfill God's charge and plans. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Man. Setting our hearts ablaze. Luke chapter 24. Lots of reading here. But I hope it sets the stage for all that we're talking about. Stop, Starting in verse 13 of chapter 24. Now that day that two of them were on their way to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about all that had happened. And while they were talking and debating these things, Jesus himself approached and began to accompany them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Then he said to them, what are these matters you are discussing so intently as you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad, those things concerning Jesus the Nazareth. They replied, A man who powerful in deeds and words proved to be a prophet before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and the rulers handed him over to be contemned by death and crucify him. But we had hoped that he was going to be the one to redeem Israel. You foolish people. How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things that were written about himself in all the scriptures. When he had taken his place at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. At that point, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Then he vanished out of their sight, and they said to each other, Didn't our hearts burn within us as he was speaking with us on the road while he was ex explaining the scriptures to us? So they got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. Basically, a whole day's walk. Yeah. I know there's different accounts, but it's interesting. How does Jesus spend one of his days following a resurrection? Walking with two dudes down the road who are despondent. Yeah. <laughs> but he has a message. Yeah. Yeah. We don't like our doubts. Our doubts leave us hopeless. Mm -hmm. In our doubts, we find it hard to see Jesus, right? Yeah. Yeah. He seems distant. He doesn't seem real. He doesn't seem like he cares or he doesn't listen. And we wrestle. We, we have our doubts and disappointments and we feel hopeless. We have discouragements in life. 
that make it so hard to see Jesus in the day in and day out. But you know what it is? You know, as we're journeying through threads, but even as I share here, it is walking with God. It is walking with Him that you will see Jesus more clearly. I know at times it's easy to go, well, I don't see Him. You put your Bibles down. But it is walking with Him that your eyes will be opened. Mm -hmm. That you will have greater clarity. Mm -hmm. You will not see Jesus like even in your own thinking. Mm -hmm. You've got to let His Word open up your heart. It is walking in this life with Him. Breaking of bread, meals, communion, fellowship, that Jesus becomes more clear in our lives. And it is then that Jesus will set our hearts ablaze. That's what He wants to do. He appeared to these guys for a reason. To help change their life and help them become a powerful witness to the resurrection. Keep going. He restores us. This is such a great story. In John chapter 21. Simon Peter, verse 1. Simon Peter told him, I'm going fishing. We'll go with you. Then they went out and got in the boat. and That night they caught nothing. Hmm. Sounds like a story I read earlier. I'm surprised they didn't get it. <laughs> But not yet. Maybe, maybe because they've had their nights of fishing, fishing, no fish in their nets. When it was already very early in the morning, Jesus stood on the beach. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to them, Children, don't you have any fish? Do you? You don't have any fish, do you? They replied, No. Throw your net on the right side of the boat. And you will find some. So they threw the net, and they were not able to pull it in because the large number of fish. When they got on the beach, they saw the charcoal file fire with fish placed on it and bread. Now, when was the last time Peter was near a fire? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Wow. Last time he was near a charcoal fire. He denied his Lord. Yeah. Jesus said, bring some of the fish that you have now caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and pulled the net to shore. It was full of large fish, 153. We want to make sure that we get the exact number. Though there were so many, the net was not torn. Come, have some breakfast, Jesus said. Then when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Son of John, do you love me more than these do? He replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus told him, Feed my lambs. Jesus said a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus told him, Shepherd my sheep. And Jesus said a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was distressed that Jesus had asked him a third time, do you love me? But listen, how many times did Peter deny Jesus? Purpose in Jesus asking. He said, yes, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And Jesus replied, feed my sheep. I tell you the solemn truth. When you were young, you fed, you you tied your clothes around you and went whatever you wanted. And when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will tie you up and bring you to where you do not want to go. And Jesus said this to, to indicate clearly what kind of death Peter was going to glorify God. And then he said this to Peter, follow me. You know, in your Bibles, it may, be, it may read something about Peter's reinstatement. 
I don't know how that hits you. It just seems reinstatement. What does that even mean? Yeah. His restoration. His return. Word we even use today is reconstruction. His rehabilitation. His revival. That's what it's all about. Peter fell on his face. He failed miserably to be a testimony and witness to Jesus. Ran away and hide, hid in his shame and his disheartenment. I think we've all wondered whether our shelf life as Christians might be coming to an end. Yeah. The expiry date of the product is coming close. Yeah. This should give us vision. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Peter had no expiration date, no. except the time that he actually did get crucified in glorifying God and being yeah. a witness. We lose vision. It's easy to find other comforts. Yeah. We go to the things that we're, we're comfortable with. We go to the things that will, whether it's be, maybe you're not a fisherman, fisher person, but we go to things that bring us comfort. Mm -hmm. We go to binging, watching TV. We go to, some go to extremes of exercise. I just, I, I, you know, get into shape and fitness or, or whatever we, we try to fill ourselves with things but Jesus is the only answer Jesus is inviting Peter back if we deny Jesus he wants us back Amen. if we fail he still wants us back yeah. Yeah. we're going to continue to see this theme throughout scripture yeah. again it's not that Israel will be perfect but he will use and he will go back the book of lamentations after Jerusalem is destroyed because of their sin because of their faithlessness yeah. God would still have vision and God still has vision for our lives and Peter would be, go on to become a great shepherd of God's people. He would write a book of First Peter and talk about how, and, and describe what shepherding is. How to help the Christians grow. Before we get into this last point, we're going to sing a song. Agnes Day. Now I don't know if you know what Agnes Day means. It means Lamb of God. And so as we get into the book of Revelation, we're going to sing this song, and I'm going to read a passage of scripture as we continue to kind of sing quietly. I think it's very powerful to reflect upon who Jesus is uh, in our lives. Amen? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. You can go ahead and stand. Hallelujah. 
take the scroll and to open its seals because you were killed. And at the cost of your own blood, you purchased for God persons from every tribe, language, people, and nation. You appointed them as a kingdom of priests to serve our God, and they will reign on earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels in circling around the throne, as well as the living creatures and the elders. For the number was 10,000 times 10,000, all of them singing in a loud voice. Worthy is the land who has killed to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth, in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne to the Lamb, be praise, honor, glory, ruling power forever and ever. chapter 21 verse 22 and 22 it says then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and earth had ceased to exist and the sea existed no more and I saw the holy city the new Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God made ready like a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying look the residence of God is among human beings he will live with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death will not exist anymore, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the former things have ceased to exist. And the one seated on the throne said, Look, I'm making all things new. Then he said to me, Write it down, because these words are reliable and true. He also said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the one who is thirsty, I will give water free of charge from the spring of the water of life. The one who conquers will inherit all these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son or daughter. Now I saw no temple in the city, because the Lord God, the All-Powerful, and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need sun or moon to shine on it because the glory of God lights it up and its lamp is the Lamb. And there will no longer be any curse and the throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city. His servants will worship Him and they will see His face and His name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. They will need, not need the light of a lamp and the light of the sun because the Lord God will shine on them. And they will reign forever and ever. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. 
I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. And the spirit and the bride said, Come! And let the one who hears it say, Come! And let us, the one who is thirsty, come! Let the one who wants to take the water of life free of charge, the one who testifies to these things, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. This storyline talks about the restoration of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Why do I journey? Why do I get up each day from the sometimes the challenges and doubts? Because I envision this day. It's what inspired the church so much. It's why they could go through. The book of Revelation is written because they were enduring intense persecution. And God needed, and Jesus wanted to provide for them. Listen, don't give up. There is ultimately something worth it. All of your pain, death, mourning, grief will be gone. It will be worth it. Just endure. Just get up. There'll be no chaos. The, the sea refers to chaos. To the Jew, the sea was a scary place. Yeah. Even in, the, in Genesis chapter 1, what does it talk about? I mean, the, the, the Spirit of God is hovering over the waters. Yeah. There, there's chaos. What does God bring to the chaos? Order and creation. Yeah. No tears. Boy. Yeah. I can't imagine life without some sort of pain and tears. Yeah. A restored world. No night. I do like my sleep, so I don't know exactly what that means. But I know I'll be refreshed. I won't need sleep. No darkness. No strife between nations. Oh my goodness. Wow. It's sad. I just, I, there's a part, and I, I, I'm. The reality is there will always be war. This is the only time that's going to change. Man's nature is selfish. It needs God and Jesus to reshape it and bring a different perspective. No thirsts. Our deepest longings for our souls will be satisfied. What an ending. What an ending to a beautiful story. You know, as we walk with God, God walks with us. Amen. We are all his never-ending stories. Reflect on that this week. Let it inspire you. Let the, the various endings of the gospel, whatever hits you, inspire you in your relationship with God and ultimately realize that stick it out and you will the ending there, there will be no cliff hanging there will be no wow that was disappointing there will be none of that it will be like wow I am so glad that I stuck this out because it was absolutely worth it you and I are never-ending stories. Hope you're inspired this morning. I know I am. Just a few announcements. Uh, midweeks will continue. Uh, we're, we're going to, when the new, when the new weather, yes, the new weather starts. <laughs> when the new heaven and the new earth, no. When spring comes, we're going to have some in-person midweeks, kind of both men, women, congregationally. So uh, stay tuned. The tailors are already doing a great job hosting uh, some of you for the midweeks. That will continue. We'll continue to have some of that online. Next Sunday, we'll be back here. And you may be wondering, when, when is Thread starting? Tomorrow. Okay. Uh, a big part of the theme, this is, I think, fine. I find it very exciting, but also challenging. A big part of the theme of this next section is wilderness. It's where God transforms us. Yeah. I think it's going to be a very exciting time. 
I think it, it can be a very transformed. Israel went through the wilderness that God was with them. His presence was with them, Amen. just like we talked about today. Mm -hmm. And so things very, very exciting. So that will all begin again tomorrow uh, at the, the podcast. Next week, we'll kind of launch into our first, uh, first of that series. We're going to finish now with uh, Men Who Dream. Oh. You know, first of all, it's not we who initially dreamed. No. You can stand. Go ahead. Yes. It, it, is, it, is, it is God who provided the dream. I just need to get it out here.